Did we not react to this already? Welcome back to Enshrouded. This is going to be our last video from the Gameplay Pillar series, so let's dive right into survival and exploration. As you begin your adventure in the world of Enshrouded, you will need to survive in the wilderness amidst the unknown. To do so, you will need to gather resources such as rocks, plants and logs, honing your crafting skills to create essential items for your daily endeavors. Your very first task is to establish why does this guy that he's playing look like a fucking hobbit? Like, <laughs> this human has things that's weird. There's an altar of the flame, claiming your base and the humble beginnings of your future castle. Well, it starts as a hut. Awesome. Let's dream big. Venturing into the woodlands to gather logs might seem quite easy at first. You will need to chop down some trees, gather logs, but in the process, you must watch out for the lively wildlife. They won't be impressed by your bare fists. Uh -huh. Best solution right now is to run away and craft yourself some basic gear like a sturdy shield, trusty wooden club, and come back for some action. You can okay. defeat the wolves. It's not gather experience, bad so far. At least doesn't look food. too bad. Now, building a first basic shelter is the next important step for survival. Use a workbench to craft a construction hammer and some building blocks. If you want to learn more about building and terraforming in Enshrouded, you can check out the video available in the top right corner of your screen or find the link in the description down below. Mm -hmm. As we finish the construction of our very first cozy hut, in order to rest, we must make sure to craft a, hmm, not so comfy bed from the wall. Okay, that triggered the fuck out of me. Could you turn the bed around and have the pillow face the fucking wall, please? Who sleeps like this? Bench. You can place it inside, and after a hot days of work, a good night's sleep is in order. This will give you a rested buff. Now, the real adventure begins. Your first quest, finding the blacksmith. There is a bridge uh -huh. that will get us to the vault where we might find the blacksmith, but unfortunately, it's been destroyed. So we need to go through the fog in order to reach the other side. The shroud has engulfed all of the world and we only have limited time to survive within it until we die. So we have to resurface quickly enough before our time runs out. The remaining time can be seen on the new hot element below our compass. As you are in the shroud, keep an eye on the timer. Your protection against the fog won't last forever. Find the hourglass capsules to extend your exploration time and discover secrets hidden within the shroud. Oh wow, As we what an interesting location, mechanic. Start your ally when approaching enemy camps. You may take a different approach at first, but remember, one of the best ways is to sneak around, avoid detection, and surprise your enemies with an attack from behind for extra damage. Uh -huh. You've conquered your opponents, gathered loot, and gained experience. Our next step is to unlock the secrets of the ancient vault. And as a reward, we will be able to set the blacksmith free to join our ranks. We can now teleport back to our cozy home by using the map and fast travel. After we teleport, it would be the perfect time to expand our house and make sure we have enough space for our NPCs and crafting stations. Those don't fit though. Now, we have to make sure to give a blacksmith a sheltered spot. By giving a roof over your blacksmith's head, you will be able to unlock more crafting recipes. Now, let's upgrade the armor. One of the very first armors that you will be able to unlock is the very fashionable first. It kind of looks like Valheim with better graphics. It looks like a very big developer looked at Valheim and thought, you know what, we can make this, but actually make it better. Like, make it look better. Which is sort of the danger if you're a, a, a small indie company. You're always at the danger of larger companies coming around and basically stealing your shit uh, and just making it better. But it look, it does look good. The gameplay looks fun. I love the shroud idea. I don't know how it's going to play out in, in general, but it, it looks decent. For armor. Let's go into the woods for some hunting. Hunting becomes an exhilarating challenge. Nothing screams adventure like wielding a bow. Sneak up on those speedy animals and aim for the head for the critical shots. As you kill the wildlife, you will be able to collect necessary resources, such as animal fur, raw food and bones. Now, we need to find or craft a campfire to unleash our culinary skills and cook up a feast of delicious foods. When you cook food, you have to be careful not to overcook it, otherwise you will be eating charcoal for days, which I can't imagine is good for you. 
This is just a basic way to prepare food while you're out on adventures. You will be able to cook more advanced mm -hmm. recipes at home. Now, the perks. Check your status tab and character menu to see what effects different types of food have on you. You can also see if you are well rested or if there are any negative this effects is just such as being cold. 100% copied from Valheim. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind it. Yeah, it is a survival game. But the reason I don't mind it is I've always thought that Valheim did eating and drinking perfectly. You don't die when you don't drink. You don't die when you don't eat. You just don't get bonuses, which is a hell of a lot more fun than having to eat every half an hour because apparently your character has the fastest metabolism in the history of ever. Or poison, for example. Our next quest is to explore the elixir well. Is it multiplayer? Let's use our glider to get there quickly. Oh, now, apparently we have a glider now. Up through the game, you will be unlocking skill points to customize your character as you please. No restrictions here. Mix and match classes and Whoa. dive into endless fun and remember, you can respect later, so feel free to experiment. Let's start with oh, look the look at that attack. fucking tree. Combining a glider Part of exile meets Valheim. With an evasion attack can be extremely helpful with not losing any momentum. This will let you unleash a devastating attack upon landing. As an example, you can take a high position by one of the elixir's walls, scout around to see where the enemies are, and once you are ready, drop in on them to unleash a devastating attack. The combat is actually pretty cool. On the Game. approach of the wall BC entrance, AI, not that those mysterious cool. return beacons are your saving grace. Replenish your time in the shroud and revive next to one if the worst happens. Let's climb down and explore the depths of the elixir well. With bravery and skill, you will face a daunting boss in the well. To do that, you can use different weapons such as swords, axes, and for range combat, bows, staffs, and wands. Remember, mixing and matching any weapon is possible. As you defeat the boss, not gonna lie, this looks fucking cool. Actually, awaits you, enabling you to destroy the shroud root. This means that the fog will go away temporarily, but will reappear again, so that if the players from your party want to do the quest again, they can. Back at home, we can focus again on crafting mastery. It is With multiplayer. More experience and materials, we can now unlock a forge and charcoal kiln. First of all, let's start with a charcoal kiln. You will need coal in order to start producing metal sheets at the forge. Now, let's set up the forge to craft metal sheets, which will allow you to unlock a new set of tools and new armor. So, prepare yourself. More exhilarating quests and adventures await you in the mysterious world of Enshrouded. Thank you for watching. Once again, you can. Yeah, I think this is a really good game. Or at least it looks like it. We'll have to wait and see, but I, I like the mechanic with the shroud. I definitely like the fact that there's a skill tree that you can make it as good as you want. Multiplayer is always online or optional co-op. I don't know. They said something about... I'm assuming it's going to be very similar to Valheim. But I mean, obviously I can't know, right? I don't, I don't know anything about this game. Pe uh, I, I was just asked to react to this, and so I did. But, but I, I have no idea.